play with. And today we're going to make some journal cards and frame these up. So to that end, I have a bunch of papers. I have some, a bunch of my box of book pages. So I think I'm going to go ahead and grab actually a music page to start with. I'll grab a couple of those and we'll grab a couple of book pages. Just figure out what we're going to do with that. And then I can take that off and just drop it on the floor. And then I have also all of my strips. And what we're going to do is take some of these pictures and we're going to make pockets. I don't want to make, let me start with, which one do I want here? Let's start with this one. So that's too big, obviously, too, too long. So I'm going to first cut it down to about seven inches. Mm, yeah, because most of my pieces are eight and a half inches tall. So we'll just put that piece aside and we're going to turn this into a pocket. Do we want to add a little book page to it to frame it up? Sure, why not? Where's my ruler, my tear ruler. Sorry, I've got a couple of things here in my way. So let's go ahead and take the edges off of this. This is a page from, uh, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. It was a book that I've been ripping apart for a while. I only have a few pages of it left. And I always wonder when I watch people rip apart pages, I don't know about you, but I'm always trying to make the video really big so I can see what book they're ripping apart. Because it, you know, it's, it's interesting to me. Okay, let's take that about here. No measuring there. Okay, we'll set that aside for use maybe some other time. Now, we probably should find our picture, shouldn't we? That's a cool picture. See, this would be really nice in a, a nature journal. So we're framing up all of these magazine pictures because we've got to do something with them. My glory, I have so many of them. Do I want to add another? Oh, that one looks like it could be a tag. I could just cut that part off. Okay, I don't know if I want to put that there or not. Or if I just want to leave it. I kind of like it, just like that. My bottom is not very level, though. So let's level that out. I want to get it right on the line. So I'm going to use the lines on my mat to help me make a more level it's still kind of off, but anyway. There. Get that corner out. So yeah, I I have all of these. No, I like it up at the top. So let's go ahead and grab the glue book and our trusty. Elmer's washable school glue. This is what I have been using pretty much since the beginning. And I started using it only because it was what I had. I've since tried a couple of other stick glues, but I like this one the best. It's what I can get in the stores here. It's not expensive um, and it works. I like it better. I know some people prefer the two-sided tapes um, I have found, at least in my area, I don't know, maybe it's the humidity or something, they don't stick around very well. They don't, they don't last, and I like them to last a little longer. I have no idea where this bridge is or where it came from, but there we go. Okay, we're gonna, we, we have more decorating to do on that, but we're just going to leave that for now, because right now what we're doing is taking these images and figuring out what we can do with them. And where we can put them. So I have, I like, okay, 
I also obviously have some foils mixed in here, which we could also use, but right now let's kind of go with what these images are. I like that house. Okay. See, I have this. This is just from a, a thing, but it's six by six. And while it's really pretty, it's a little bit big. So let's go ahead and cut it down because a six inch wide piece will not fit into my five and a half inch journals. So let's cut it down to, oh, let's cut it down to four and three quarters. We'll take that piece off, throw it in the strip box because, you know, we'll use it at some point. I like this house. I kind of like the fact that it says kind heart on it. That is not, again, a level piece, but this one I think I'm going to cut rather than tear and give it a nice level. Oh, that, boy, I'm having trouble with my corners today. There. Get rid of that. Okay. I like the fact that it still says kind heart. We'll kind of put it like this, but I want to layer it. I want to put a little bit more to it, and I don't want another book page on here. So let me see what I have in my box. I have a lot of these. Oh, that's a, that's a color that might work with this, because we're not going to see that part. Yeah, there we go. I like that. We'll move our lady out of the way for the moment and get this. And I am going to not cut this yet. You'll see I'm going to cut it in a little bit. Got some pieces hanging, pieces of glue all over the place. Okay, I'm going to put this right here. Glue it down and then I'm going to cut it. I could wrap it, uh, but why waste? Why waste the scrap? So where do I get my magazine images? Well, I have two subscriptions that I use uh, a lot that I, I rip apart often. One of them is the Smithsonian Magazine, uh, one of my favorites, and the other is the Saturday Evening Post. I like the stories in the Saturday Evening Post. So we, I get those two um, pieces. Now see, kind heart and a pretty piece here. And that will work very nicely as a pocket in a journal. Let me grab my, the journal that I'm working on. And this particular signature has nothing in it except um, stuff that I have used already. So see, I could put it here, and actually, you know what? That would, what that, how that would work? That would work really nicely. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, just to show you how that, how these can go. I'm put my top on my glue. I've got a bit of a mess today. I don't always have a messy desk, but sometimes we do. Okay, just double checking. Yep, I want it to go along the side. I'm using Fabri-Tac for this. I tend to use Fabri-Tac for my journals or for my um, pockets because it gives a thinner line and I like that. And I'm gonna bring it right up to the edge, post it in there, and then I'm gonna get my corner or my uh, circle punch and I'm gonna put a little notch right there. And now, let me find a, well here's, I can use this card. This is not actually a card, it's going to be a, a journal page, but
Now I have a pocket in my page. See? Oh my lord, the pages are all over the place here today. See? Pocket. This is made of everything scrap. There is nothing in here that isn't a piece of scrap. Even the ties on here were ties that I got that held together some lace. Um, so yeah, everything in here is scrap. There is nothing in here that is brand new. That's what I'm filling it up with. That's the whole point. And then this will be a journal that will go, I don't know, it'll be for sale. Somebody will get it nice. Somebody will, will have that particular journal. Okay, this particular piece of paper, you may have seen me try this. I don't remember if I did this on camera or not. I tried, it's a really, really old piece and actually brittle for folding. So we don't want it for folding. It is, however, uh, five and a half by eight and a half. No, by, it's more than that. No, it is eight and a half, five and a half by eight and a half. And that's too big. Um, I can't, I don't want something quite that big in here, but I want to be able to use this. So I'm going to cut it down by about a half an inch. It's not much on the top. And then I'm going to cut it down and I'm, I kind of like that ragged edge, so I think I'm going to leave it. In fact, hang on. It's only paper, right? We can do whatever we want with it. So if I fold it, see how it cracks? And I fold it. It just cracks itself right off. It's so old and so brittle. And I don't care if it's exactly even. <clears throat> there we go. Now, doesn't that make a nice base? That might be a base for her. She's got very specific edges, though, so let's see if we can't. No, probably not. I'm probably going to end up having to do... Come on. Because newspaper or, uh, magazines are a lot more fragile, depending upon what kind of magazine you're getting. I don't remember who she is, but she was in uh, one of my Smithsonian magazines, so she's somebody... I want to get as much of the harp as I can. Okay. So if you have magazine images, if you've been collecting them and you don't know what to do with them, this is just an option. We're just playing today on this Maker Monday. And we're just kind of... I haven't really tried this before. I just... I saw somebody talking up in about framing up images. And I thought, I could do that. I know how to frame things, sort of, kind of. Okay, let's frame her with a little bit something. Nope, wrong color. Wrong color, I like the concept, wrong color. How about this one? And all these, in, these pieces. I know what I need. Where's my music pages? I said I, I had some music pages here. She's playing the harp. We need some music page. Okay. Cutting this down again. Because I really don't need a lot of music. I just want a little bit. So let's take just a couple of... Well, and in fact, maybe just the one is all I need. The one set of measures. If it's not enough, I've got plenty, obviously. I ripped apart a hymnal, so I have a lot of music pages. Plus, I have several more hymnals upstairs. So, I have lots more. Okay, we're going to save that piece for something else at some other point. All right, so I have music. So, we can put music. Oh, you know what? Let's put music at her top and at her bottom. 
All right, here we go. This will be a true test to see if I can rip straight today. Ish. When you're working with such a small piece, it can be more difficult. There, let me throw those away. Okay, I'm gonna frame her with a little bit of music on the top and on the bottom. I like that, showing up. Okay, there we go, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, do I want anything else in her frame? I might want to put a frame around her. Okay, let's get these pieces down and then we will, uh, I have, I will pause my video and get something else. But let's start with this. So take a look at all of your scraps, things that you have. Don't go out and buy anything new. That's the whole point of using up the magazine images, is that you you have already cut these images out. You've got a pile of them. Maybe you're planning to do some collage, or maybe you get them for um, just because you don't know what you're going to do with them. You just know that you have them. Okay. Let's see if that's correct. That works. I can always take a little bit more off the bottom if I decide I need to. Okay, closing that over. This glue book is very, very close to its end. I know I think I've said that the past couple of videos and then it just lasts a little bit longer. Kind of like a glue stick. You know, you think you're at the very end of the glue stick and then you can get just a little bit more out of it. Put her down here. Oh. There. And I like the fact that it's not entirely straight. I do want to take just a little bit more off the bottom. There. Okay. Now, I'm going to pause you for a sec. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. And I have a frame. So I kind of like that frame, but I don't... It's too bright. Um, I wasn't sure whether that was going to work. So I'm going to dull it up a little bit. And we'll just, I don't know if on camera this shows up as coming down in color. I'm just using a little vintage photo around it, appropriate, I suppose, for the name. And we're just, I cut this out of, using my Big Shot. And... I've never tried to make this kind of frame before. Now I could frame her this way. Hmm. Do I like that or do I want it more? I kind of like that. Of course, my edges come off a little bit, but that's not necessarily a problem. Let me grab a... Oh, where did my piece go? Hang on. Well... Doesn't matter, I have the second signature here. So let me grab the second signature and a page. There we go. And let's see how it fits. Now, if I put it off that way, it, it, it's off too much. So we're going to have to go this way. Because if I'm making this as a pocket to go into a journal, top or bottom, I need it to be able to actually fit on the page. So let's go ahead and... Use the glue stick. And we're going to come all the way around the outside edge. And we have a glue book because you're making a mess. Ah, 
And we're gonna put that right there and frame her up. Okay, again, not necessarily finished, but once it goes into an actual journal, I may add like numbers or something else. I kind of like how it doesn't, it, the, the, the notes go up and so does the edge of the picture. I kind of like that, that's really cool. All right, uh, I'm gonna pause my video one more time and I'll be right back. Okay, I have one last image here that I wanna play with and I have gotten out some very specific pieces for it. Um, I love this image of the hands uh, and the crystal ball and I do a whole series of D&D um, journals, character journals. And I think this would be absolutely perfect for it. There we go. Just want to take a little bit off to make the edges a little rough. And although it's going to get framed, because that's the whole point today, we're framing our magazine images. And I have a couple different kinds. I thought about putting it on black, but obviously it's going to, I think black is going to be my base. But this one is a little bit too big, so let's cut it down. It is six inches wide. Um... Let me go this way first and make it, let's go with four and a quarter. Four and a quarter by, well, let's see, what do we got here? Can't be six. Six is too big. So let's go Go with, uh, again, no, I don't want, I want, I do want it. There we go. Let's try that. That's not quite a square. Now this has some white edges on it. So I'm going over this. I want to go over it with black. I have, um, I think it's, well, it's, yeah, black suit. Black soot. We're going to go over it with black soot. Because I want to take off that whiteness around the edge. I don't want the white to show. So we're just going to go around and blacken that up. Fairly easy. I'm not really trying to do to distress it so much as I am covering the black or covering the white with black. Okay, now see the black on black is too much, so we definitely need something. Do I want something more Victorian? Or do I want something solid? I like the Victorian. But I also have a couple of different... I have English, I have music, I have Hebrew, and I have German. So what might I want to put? Maybe I don't want to put that behind it. Maybe I want to just put some different languages behind it. Okay, there we go. Let's do some different languages. I'll just take a little bit of this one. Put a little German. This is from Goethe. Bought a book in German from a library that was having a sale. It was German. It was Goethe in the original. I don't know how many people are reading Goethe in the original. But let's put a little bit of German in there. And I have, I kept the number on this page because I don't read Hebrew. This is from Harry Potter. It's a Harry Potter, Hebrew translation of Harry Potter. Um, and I like the fact that we've got these different languages here. Uh, 
Um, just looking to see what's there. Okay. I like the italics on that. Come off of there. So we're framing up this picture using all sorts of different pieces. And of course, now we need a little bit of music. And I think I just want one measure, one uh, stanza here. Just a little bit up along the side. Okay, let's start putting this together and see what we end up with. I'm going to start with the music on the side because it's a little bit long and I'm probably going to have to cut it off, which is fine. I'll put the clef in there. Okay, so it's got just a little bit of an overhang. Not a big deal. Snip. Gone. I don't know where that piece of paper went. Okay, now let's put our Goethe in. I hope you're all having a good day. It is a really nice day here in the Finger Lakes. It is supposed to do some raining later on, but it is just a little cloudy today, so it's not too bad. And then, I, I hope I don't have that upside down. I went and took it off my page. See, I, I put the page with the numbers on it because I don't know. Okay, I think that's right side up. If I have it upside down, please let me know in the comments and I will fix it. It's only glue. I'm comparing it to see. Okay, I think that's right. You're probably screaming at me. A little bit of English along the side. So there we go. We have our framing and now we're going to put our picture down. So when you're cutting out pictures from magazines you just kind of keep them in a bin somewhere and now you're trying to figure out what to do with them. Well frame them up and use them for pockets. I'm just making these pockets because I don't necessarily have a journal in mind. I'm lining up the edges so that it's, but it's, it's okay if it's off. I don't want it to necessarily be straight. So now when it goes into a journal, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not putting a notch in it because I don't know which one, which way I want this one to go. All right, so we've done that pocket and we've done this pocket. And we've done this pocket, and this pocket I've already put in here. Using up your magazine images. I guess that maybe that's the title of this particular video. I don't know. In any case, I hope you're having a great day. And make sure you have subscribed if you uh, want a notification to when the next one comes out, use that little bell down in the corner or up in the corner. I don't know where the bell is on your particular piece, but that'll get you a notification the next time a video comes out. Make sure you hit the like button to let YouTube know that you're liking these. And I hope you're watching these videos all the way through and sharing them with your friends. Share them with a group. If there's something that you see that you think another group might be interested in, feel free to share it. Uh, in the meantime, this is Cindy signing off.